good. All right, we got a great guest. As always, uh, this is a guy that I, as a uh, young journalist, because um, he's way older than me, as we all know, um, really want to grow up and be Buddy Mark because involved in, as an author, involved as a TV guy, involved as radio, involved as a great sports writer, one of the guys I read all the time. What a, what a great thrill it is to bring him up here because he really is the kind of guy I wanted to be. Unfortunately, I did not achieve those goals, but uh, let's bring him up here, Buddy Mark. something that everybody has. So I really mean it when I say that you should, everybody give him 20 bucks for his birthday. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I bring you greetings tonight from the Ocala Quarterback Club, of which I am a board member. And I must tell you, only about six or seven years ago, the past been there every year, uh, the club shrunk. And I was a latecomer into it and it got down to like 50 members. So we got together, Mike McKinnis, myself, and a couple of people said, what are we gonna do about this? We can't have the same diet. It's been around since 1955. Not as old as this club. How many years is that? Can we do the math? Since 1955, I grew up as a sports writer, loving to come hear people speak there, like Freddie Russell, Blackie Sherrod, all those great names. One of the great lines Freddie Russell had, he told the story when he was speaking in Miami and he knew things were going extremely well. <clears throat> he didn't know how bad they were going. He gave a speech, he woke up, he said, he read the Miami Herald the next day and said, Freddie Russell is the oratorical equivalent of Black Punt. <laughs> That's something you want to see your next name next to it. Great for me to get a chance to meet guys like that growing up and the quarterback club has been special. This club is exceptional. I've had a pleasure of speaking here two or three times. Got to do a great job. Just getting people out to connect again is difficult. We found that our club almost went under. And fortunately, we had a membership drive. We got another 50 members, and now we're over around 100 and so members, and they do a terrific job. Mike Gunnis is a great captain, so I'm proud to say I'm a board member of the Ocala Quarterback Club. And remember in the old days, who's old enough to know? No one knows this. They used to get speakers and pay them a lot of money, Pat. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know what you get paid no count, right? Uh, so, so what they did was they got together at Daytona. I think they was going to bet on a Thursday night, Ocala on a Wednesday, and Dave's on a Tuesday. They put the money together and said, hey, we'll pay you a grand to come down here and speak. And that's how they got these guys, which was a great idea. And uh, I know I benefited from it greatly. So I did a little research on this club. Bill Strong, who is a member of the Ocala Quarterback Club as well, tells me that this Club was started in the 1950s. Anybody know the date? Um, five prominent businessmen. Anybody know who they were? Yep. Um, of course, given over a million dollars uh, and gave the first x ray machine to the training room. So, this kind of stuff is great. So, <clears throat> very happy to be here tonight. Honored that you'd ask me to come. I was here for Urban's talk uh, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago. Had a good time talking to him about special teams. Special teams. You know what that is? Special teams. And did an interview with him last week. We do a show every Friday called Best Friday for Football. And I asked him the emphasis he put on special teams. How important is it to have good special teams? He said, the head coach has got to be the special teams coach, period. Because one of the things you have to do is convince these first round draft choices like Denoris Jenkins and all these other great players they had, you're going to play the special teams. They don't want to play the special teams. But they get them on the special teams and they earn their way on the field, starting lineup, because they play special teams. David Nelson, 
David Nelson, remember Pat? He couldn't get on the field until he played special teams after the Tebow speech. And then he became a star and caught a touchdown pass in the national championship again, whatever. Urban said that you need a face and a name. I agree with that. And you need to emphasize it. Who can tell me the name of the special team coach of Florida? <laughs> All right. He's called a game changer. All right, so it's called Chris Couch. I don't know. I mean, do you think there's enough emphasis on special teams? I mean, first of all, having someone who can count would be good, right? 